Fear! 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 Can you imagine a world without sound? You can't hear the chirping of the birds or the crickets at night, or even the sound of your mother's voice. Well, for many persons who are hearing impaired, this is their reality. Over the next half hour, we'll learn about a special project that is a collaborative effort involving many stakeholders that will make life better for thousands of children and their parents. It's the Ellen Steinbach Hearing Project. The, the primary objective is really behind the project is for us to be able to screen and identify any infants, B students throughout the island who may be suffering with um, any type of hearing loss. We did a pioneer project at the Good Shepherd Primary School and we realized that there's a significant problem among these students. We found some cases of students who could not hear what was going on. What that did is it helped us or encouraged us to investigate the problem a little more. And we spoke with Ben Stable and other people in the um, area. And we discovered that this was a national problem. A problem that had been around for some time. I was, I was approached by Rotary, uh, Rotary West in terms of their uh, their interest in finding out if hearing problems were present in school children, uh, especially the uh, in, in infants A to class four, really. And we and they came to me because this this that very study had been done initially 20 years previous to that um, uh, by in coordination with, uh, I think it was the Development Bank, and certainly when Edutech was happening, edu edu it was a part of edu Edutech. Now that's a little long for most people to remember, but it was about 20 years ago. And so they wanted to, they, they wanted to know if there were any early learning problems, if there were any learning problems in the schools that could be identified early. My suggestion was well, the easiest one to identify at an early age was hearing, because hearing tests can be administered to very young children, um, and you can get very reliable results. And if there are any problems, uh, deal with it at that point in time rather than let uh, hearing loss, which is an, an invisible loss, you don't see hearing loss, let that go from next year to the next year of school all the way to class four and uh, having probably a profound uh, effect on the child's learning. Minister of Education Kay McConney gave government's perspective on the project and explained why it was so important. A national survey of speech and hearing difficulties in primary school children. That was between the ages of 5 to 11. That was back in 1997. I am told that was perhaps the most recent of the major surveys that were done nationally. And in that program, all students were screened for speech and hearing difficulties as part of the secondary education project sponsored by the government of Barbados and the Caribbean Development Bank. Now that survey showed that approximately 5.27% of the children were found to have hearing difficulties. And 24% of them had speech difficulties. And I am informed that many of the children after the detailed assessment um, was conducted, they were found to have significant hearing loss that was impacting both at this, situation, at this time. As Minister Mokani attests, children in Barbados have had this problem for a long time. And it is critical that children be screened at an early age so that intervention is made and the necessary care and attention is provided so that children will be better able to have the skills to be able to learn and to do so and thrive. Because we understand that this is not a new problem for Barbados. It has been here for a while. And the appeal that is being made by Rotary Club West 
um, that let us make this something that goes on, that it is not something we hold on to now and we let go of at some stage, but that we need to make this sustainable. It's knowing that because it has existed for a while, we know that it will also continue in the future. And we really want to give the young people of the future, our children of the future, the opportunity to benefit from what those today are now going to benefit from because of the Ellen Steinbach project. When we discovered the scope of the problem, I had personal experience through what happened at Good Shepherd, uh, we decided that we needed to intervene. Um, what also encouraged us is that when we spoke with Mr. Stabler, we realized that nothing had been done in this area for the last 20 years. Uh, so we as a club, given our community focus, we felt this was something that we needed to step in and see what we could do to help. So the principal of Barbados Community College um, facilitated all of the training which occurred at BCC and we have two groups of screeners. Cohort one are the BCC screeners. There are 12 students in that group and those screeners um, provide screening for us on Wednesdays. And then our second group of screeners are those who are students at the University of the West Indies and also BCC. And there are also, many of them are also Rotaract, um, which are, are, are young, the younger arm of our Rotary Club and the umbrella with that. In that group, there are 19 screeners, and those screeners provide services with us on Mondays and Thursdays. So technically, we screen on three days per week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, with the two cohorts of um, students. In the main, we have been very um, fortunate in, in establishing good relationships with all of the principals. And usually when we um, arrive at the site, they've already established um, a place where we can screen. We try to ensure that that place is as quiet a location as possible. And then um, when that is in place and we have the permission slips in place, usually the screening goes very, very smoothly. In your ears, so the sound is not getting the Barbados Community College became involved with the program in September 2021. It started when the Rotary Club of Barbados West reached out to us and they indicated that they were going to launch a national hearing assessment project. Mr. Ben Stabler, the audiologist with the Barbados Speech and Hearing Centre, he had indicated that it would be a great opportunity for students in the rehabilitation therapy technology program at the college to be involved in the program and get practical experience and then to act as volunteers in the program. The frequency is over here, the intensity is over here in decibels. The program is a two-year program. It's an associate degree program, and it is a program which introduces students to the basics in rehabilitation therapy specialties, such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech language pathology. And when they complete the program, they are then eligible then to function in the capacity of an assistance to any of these professional specialists in the healthcare sector. And I must say that that speech therapy syllabus, it includes a component of audiology. So which makes it quite, these students very, very right for the participation in the hearing screening project. So what we do is there's a, um, there's a dial for the frequency we're going to test. We're going to test one. That's, that's, how it, that's how it started out. So we ended up getting a team of volunteer teachers from the Ministry of Education which uh, 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 they were interested in that as well. So we took, I think, um, I'm not sure, half a dozen or a dozen teachers and um, had training sessions. Uh, and one of them, uh, uh, Wendy Griffith Watson, the late Wendy Griffith Watson was one of the teachers and she was probably, you know, she was perfect. So once, once we trained, uh, uh, and enough kids, we went out in the schools, tried to find a very relatively quiet place to test, and then began doing the same things you're seeing here with different kind of equipment. Pretty much the same type of equipment, but uh, quite a bit larger. Um, and trying to identify kids with hearing losses. Professionals who test for hearing are called audiologists. 
and audiology is that branch of science that deals with hearing health. So an audiologist is a healthcare professional who specializes in identifying, diagnosing, treating, and monitoring disorders of the auditory and vestibular systems. What is the vestibular system? Well, it's made up of two chambers within the inner ear. Each of these structures has a corresponding nerve system. These nerves are involved in balance and detect changes in acceleration. That's why it's so important to identify hearing loss at an early stage in a child's development. If you're hearing frequency you're not usually hearing yes. better, then it can kind of compete. 20 years ago, my dad would have done the hearing screening program, program with EduTech and they tested all of the primary school level kids and we did find some results of hearing loss from that. Um, and roll forward now 20 years later, Rotary West actually reached out to us to do a test, um, a test school at Good Shepherd Primary. We found one child there with sensory neural, so permanent hearing loss. And it was, it was a catalyst to say, okay, so we do have kids out there that are in need. Um, they don't necessarily know where to go. The parents don't know where to send them for testing. And maybe the parents don't even know that there is a problem and what that problem is. And so that child was really the, the big you know, driving force to, I think we need to test all of the government school kids. Um, and that's why we are, that's why we're here now because a lot of those kids don't know that they necessarily have a problem and it can present in lots of different ways. So once they're then treated with hearing aids, you know, they can be set better up for life. So with that child from Good Shepherd, he has what we call sensory neural hearing loss. That's permanent hearing loss that has, he acquired as a you know a baby in utero or over time. There's conductive hearing losses that are due to say wax buildup in the air or fluid buildup in the middle ear. Um, those are called conductive hearing losses. There are also disorders that are due to processing, so auditory processing, um, and that is more at the brain level and how the brain processes sound. So you can have disorders from the outer, the middle, inner, up to the brain, anywhere along this chain. And so our work here as audiologists is to try and find where on that chain is the disorder. When I was in Miss Eileen's class, then, then I used to sit down in the back and I couldn't hear Miss Eileen. And then she, and then she called my mom. I don't know what she said to my mom. But then, when I was when I was in a different class, then then people came to test my ears, and I didn't hear all the beeping. And that's how they that's how they test me to see if I can't hear properly. I turned up the TV really loud, and I kept saying part of me to my mom all the time. Cause, Cause, when she had to go, out, my mom said bye, and I said pardon me, and I keep saying, and I kept saying that, and then she realized that that I can't hear really good. Having a hearing loss is not going to uh, affect your your general intelligence and your ability. That's a, you know something different. What it will do is it can affect how well you develop speech early on. And so a lot of the times you see children with delays in speech because they're just not hearing all the consonants they need to hear. But eventually they will catch up, just like this young child we found at Good Shepherd. He, if you speak to him, you would never know he had a hearing loss. But it is most likely that when he was younger, he took a little bit longer to develop these speech sounds because he just wasn't hearing them. But that's the main thing we see in terms of developmental delays is the speech with hearing. I have short tails. Raise your hand who will give me an answer. Joelle, what is your answer? It's important as a parent to make sure your child is in an environment that will foster growth and development. If you suspect that your child may have a hearing impediment, then you need to seek professional assistance. There's lots of different avenues. If you just say, um, I'm concerned with my child, they're speaking loudly or they're having to have the TV volume up and they know that there's an audiology clinic, they can simply call 
uh, make an appointment here. They can also reach out to the Children's Development Center to make an appointment with um, the audiologist there once that child is a Barbadian citizen and is under is a minor. Otherwise, um, yeah, they can just call, make an appointment with their can ask their GP, ask their pediatrician what they would recommend, um, and then they can be told where to go next. The Ellen Steinbach Hearing Project came to fruition thanks to the love and dedication of the Steinbach family. This is their story. Well, my mom was born in Poland in 1926. Her and her family migrated to Barbados through diff uh, different routes. Um, they were fleeing um, Europe in the Second World War because they were Jewish. <clears throat> they settled in Barbados and uh, made a life for themselves in Barbados. My mom went to school in Barbados and um, that's where her education was. And then um, she lived here for the rest of her life, raising a family. Mommy had a hearing um, impediment when she was young and this hearing impediment grew worse over time um, until she eventually was completely deaf. As you could imagine, life for someone with a hearing impediment was not an easy road. And this was the case with Ellen Steinbach. In those days, and I suspect today, people with any form of impediment or any form of um, not being perfect um, suffer um, from those who you know, really don't treat them very well. So in Mummy's case, when she was at school, she couldn't hear the teachers very well. And as a result, her learning suffered. And um, you know, she was considered not to be very smart. And um, because of her hearing problem, her pronunciation was, was not very good either. And I guess of her, she, was, she had two sisters and a brother, all who had done secondary education. And mommy was sent to um, a typing school because she wasn't doing that well at school. She was very good at lip reading. So in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, most people wouldn't even know that um, she had a hearing problem. And, um, but when there were more than one person speaking at a time, it was quite challenging. So as a result, she didn't feel very comfortable um, socializing um, much. And um, similarly, because of her hearing impediment, she spoke very loud. And you know, because of that, people weren't comfortable around her. Um, so her social life was not the best because of it. Uh, I believe if, if she had been diagnosed early and had been treated, uh, her life may have turned out very different because in fact, she was a very smart lady, very determined lady and very smart lady. So how did the project get started? So the, the idea of the project actually didn't come from us we have a member of the Rotary Club of Barbados West who was the president before President René, who was the actual president, who also had a hearing defect. And he was keen on doing something to do with hearing loss and, and treating kids for hearing. And his name was um, Trevor, his name is Trevor Williams. And he did a pilot project at a primary school, Good Shepherd Primary School, where there were Kids were tested to check for hearing problems and in infants B. And one child was found to have a problem and needed intervention. And the club paid to have the, all the testing done, all the follow-up done, and had him fitted with hearing aids. And a video was distributed to the club that we saw at President Rennie's um, inauguration of when the hearing aids were turned on and his mother was standing behind him and she spoke. When he turned around and you saw the look on this little child's face, it was just, it would make anybody's heart melt. Like his mother, Martin Steinbach also has a hearing problem. I first knew about my hearing loss 
when I went to university in Canada, they had a, te a free testing um, at university and I got tested. But then the recommendation was don't be fitted with hearing aids because the technology was such that it would only have made my life more miserable. So I didn't appreciate and understand what I wasn't hearing. I knew I had a hearing loss. Um, and I went through life like that until finally at the urging of my wife and daughter, about four years ago, I went to Dr. Mariella Stabler and had it tested. She recommended hearing aids, which I had fitted, and the change was immediate. They, they looked at Joseph, he's talking about on young Pierre's face. My look might not have been the same, but I could tell you when the hearing aids were fitted and I could hear the air conditioning machine running in the office for the first time, there were songs that I forgot if I heard them when I was younger. Um, on, on that afternoon, the whistling frogs, simple things like someone hitting a spoon in a cup of disturbed the tea. I found it excessively loud. Just doing normal things can be a challenge for persons with a hearing impediment. Where I had difficulty, I could not hear a teller in a bank, so I did not, and I still don't go to a bank unless I must sign a form. Having a conversation over a meal at a dinner table, I can now have that. Before it was difficult, you would see me nodding and smiling, but I really didn't hear what you would say. Um, a one-on-one -on -one situation, I could hear television. We had to buy a song bar for the room and it was turned up to the maximum. After I got my hearing aids, I'm complaining that it's too loud and asking if it can be turned down. Thanks to the Ellen Steinbach project and early intervention, Pierre's life has changed dramatically. I went to the hearing aid doctor to get my hearing aids and when I got them, I, I smiled and I was happy that I can hear better. And then when I went home, I, I told my uncle that I got hearing aids and everyone in my house. And, and then my, my mom whispered stuff to me when I have the hearing aids on and I could have heard them better. I can hear better, I can hear the wind in the trees and, and when I go to, and when it's nighttime, I can hear the crickets. Thanks to the Ellen Steinbach project, Pierre and dozens of other students have been fitted with hearing aids and are enjoying life and are on the road to a brighter future. Of course, such a project cannot achieve its objective without the collaborative efforts of many entities. One of them was Scotiabank. They also played a significant role in allowing this initiative to achieve its objectives. The Ellen Steinbach Hearing Project is an ongoing exercise. So when it comes to your school, make sure that you consent to getting your child's hearing tested. Our children deserve to be able to have productive lives and an enabling environment. <laughs>